This story is called In the Court of Khosrow, and it features Abdullah ibn Hudayfa and co-features Khosrow Parvez. In the sixth year of the Hijra, the Prophet wasallam thought it was time to carry the message of Islam beyond the Arabian Peninsula. He decided to send some of his companions to the neighboring countries with letters addressed to their rulers, inviting them to Islam. The mission was very risky for a number of reasons. First of all, the messengers were going to far away countries with which there were no agreements or treaties to protect them. Secondly, they did not know the languages spoken in those countries, nor did they have any knowledge of the ways and the attitudes of their rulers. To invite the rulers to give up their own religion and accept the religion of the people who, just a short time ago, were nothing better than their subjects, was really amazingly courageous. Besides, asking them to give up worldly power and glory for the sake of Islam was not an easy task. The Prophet ﷺ imported six of his companions to act as his messengers. Abdullah ibn Hudayfa was among them. He was chosen to take the Prophet Wasallam's letter to Khosrow Parvez, the king of Persia. Abdullah ibn Hudayfa got his camel ready and bade farewell to his wife and son. Then he set out alone on a long journey to an unknown land, traveling for weeks on end through the desert, then strange green mountains and valleys, he reached the land of Persia. Having arrived at his destination, Abdullah told the guards at the royal castle about the letter he was carrying and sought permission to meet the king. Khosrow Parvez agreed to meet him and ordered his servants to make ready the audience hall. Meanwhile, he summoned his prominent aides. When the royal advisors had assembled, the king called to Abdullah to enter. Abdullah went in and saw the king of the Persians dressed in resplendent robes, and there was a gorgeous, beautifully arranged turban on his head. Abdullah on the other hand, was dressed in the plain coarse cores of the Bedouin, the nomad of Arabia. But the honor of Islam and the flame of faith in his heart helped him to hold his head high and keep his feet steady. The king scrutinized. Abdullah Rizdala Anhu and then signaled to one of his men to take the letter from him. But Abdullah Rizdala Anhu refused, saying, No, the Prophet وسلم, commanded me to hand the letter directly to you, and I will not go against the command of the Messenger of Allah. Let him approach me, said Khosrow to his guards. Abdullah Rizdala Anhu walked up to the king and gave him the letter. Khosrow looked at the letter but could not read it for it was in Arabic. So with a gesture of his hand, he summoned an Arabic clerk and ordered him to read the letter. The clerk looked at the letter and began translating. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. From Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, to Khosrow, the ruler of Persia. Peace on whoever follows the guidance. Here he was cut short by the king's raised voice. The king's face became red with anger. With one impatient gesture, he snatched the letter from the clerk and tearing it to pieces, shouted, How dare he write to me like this? He who is my slave! He was furious that the Prophet ﷺ had not given him due importance in his letter. Promptly ordered the guards to expel Abdullah Rizdalanu from his assembly line. Abdullah Rizdala Anhu was taken away, not knowing what would happen to him next. Would he be killed? Would he be imprisoned? Would he be allowed to leave? But he, but he did not want to wait to find out. Once outside the palace, he somehow managed to get to his camel and speedily rode off.
Back in Medina, Abdullah narrated to the Prophet وسلم, how Khusro had torn his letter to pieces. God will tear up his kingdom, was all that the Prophet وسلم, said in reply. No more than two days had passed when news reached Medina that Khusro's son had killed his father and usurped his throne.